Do this with your NVIDIA card. TikTok goes to the Supreme Court to not get shut down. And will this make you love the 50 series? Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Wednesday, December 18th, 2024. And before we jump into the news, I just wanna remind you that we do indeed have the drawing for the PC giveaway tomorrow over on our Twitch stream, twitch.tv forward slash UFD tech. We have the Thermal Take Tower 600 with a 4080 Super and a 9950X in one gigantic PC for you to enjoy. Again, winner will be drawn tomorrow and we will also announce the next PC giveaway that's happening over on our Twitch live streams. Love to have you over there. And in case you love to have frame rate, you might be a little disappointed with the NVIDIA app we talked about in yesterday's episode of Hot News that it was causing up to 15% performance loss in various different video games because you have it installed. However, there's been some investigation and it's kind of conflicting depending on uh, which sources you're looking at, but NVIDIA officially saying that right now you can just turn off game filters and photo mode in the NVIDIA app and that should potentially fix the performance issues. Now, before this even came out from NVIDIA, there were plenty of people already indicating this, and there were also just as many people indicating that that actually didn't solve the problem for them. But the key takeaway here is that there is a potential fix for certain people. NVIDIA is looking into the issue and that uh, if you're getting this issue overall, you can just uninstall everything as well. And that would be uh, a solution to your problem until it all gets figured out. But where's all the, the NVIDIA people who like to make fun of AMD's bad drivers now? Now, huh? Huh? The, there's a game filter bug in your, your FPS. Ha <laughs> ha! It's, it's not that funny. It's not that, that good of a dick. But a lot of you seem to be affected by this, at least by reading yesterday's comments. So hopefully you can get that changed. And in case you're looking to change up some PC parts in your computer, you should check out today's video sponsor. Hey you! Yeah you! You got any FSP components in your build? Well, if you don't yet, you definitely should. On top of making great PC components, FSP is also sponsoring this video. FSP has just introduced their newest and innovation in PC cases, the M580. This sleek ATX chassis sports a pioneering 270 degree panoramic curved glass panel with a rounded chamber design. Coming outfitted with four reverse ARGB fans, airflow will not be an issue. The M580 also expands into the world of hidden cables by fully supporting back connect motherboards. So all 270 degrees of viewing will be of your shiny PC components and not those ugly cables. With space for GPUs up to 445 millimeters and radiators up to 360, there isn't much that you can't fit in this thing. And speaking of components to fit in the M580, the FSP MP7 air cooler or a Vita GM 850 watt power supply are both a solid option to put in there. The MP7 is a new product from FSP that comes with dual ultra quiet fans with patented fluid dynamic bearings and is compatible with the latest CPU sockets. While the heat pipes are also copper, they have a sleek black coating adding to the all black design. Or if a power supply is what you're after, the Vita GM has been a hit with PC builders and is designed with FSP's ATX 3.1 product line in mind, making this PSU highly compatible. Being rated 80 plus gold and fully modular, this PSU is sure to serve you through several generations of GPUs, even reaching platinum levels of performance. With FSP having worked with Intel on the world's first ATX power supply, their history should speak for itself when it comes to power supplies. Pick up any or all of these FSP components today via the link in the description below and get started on that upgrade you've been thinking about. Out. Huge thanks to FSP for sponsoring today's video. I don't know how to segue from FSP into the TikTok Supreme Court US ban that's going on right now, but TikTok is supposed to be taken off of all American app stores on January 19th, 2025, because their parent company has not divested their ownership and ByteDance is still remaining in control with them being a Chinese company. TikTok needs to be owned by an American company in order for all of this to work. A court already upheld the fact that this ban can go ahead, but now TikTok is appealing to the Supreme Court to get a temporary injunction on this ban, especially because there's been some hints that the next administration that is coming into office the day after the ban takes place might stymie the ban and make sure it doesn't actually happen. And so TikTok is pleading with the Supreme Court here in the US to not allow this to go through, especially not until there's a new administration in place because it happening the day before the new administration comes into office is basically unfair according to their arguments. And TikTok continuing to argue that this is a free speech limitation, this is a problem, and 
and that the US government is overstepping its bounds here. So obviously we'll have to wait and see what the US Supreme Court decides to do, whether they pick this up or not. But so far things have not gone in the favor of TikTok. So I'm not quite sure if that's going to change with this one instance. But things are changing over with Team Blue, Intel's graphics cards, because the B580 just came out, just launched, kind of seems like there wasn't a lot of stock, sold out essentially everywhere, at least here in the United States. But certain reviewers are getting their hands on the B570, which is supposed to launch in a little under a month, coming in at January 16th. But Andreas Schilling tweeted out that he got his B570 for the reviews that they're gonna be doing over there. So it does look like they're getting ample time to review this card, which could be a very good thing. The B570, at least based on the spec, should be mostly a B580 coming in at 220 bucks. I'm a bit more excited for that GPU than I am for the B580. I know I'm in, I'm in the minority with my poo-pooing on the B580, um, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep those thoughts because every argument that I've heard against my things, I don't, I don't necessarily uh, agree with, but I, I can still be reasoned with, I suppose. And Reese, can you be reasoned with? You haven't had power for quite some time. You got deals for us? Yo, welcome back to UFT Deals, bring the hottest tech deals out on the internet. Uh, it's day two of Reese's Christmas adventure, so do I have power? Do I not? I don't. When a small town's only power supply and some lightning kiss, it doesn't make more electricity. Who would have thought? Not this guy, but hey, deals. Starting off today, we have this Xbox Series XS wireless controller going for only $34.99, making it $25 off and a great gift for that one uh, little nephew who breaks controllers all the time. But then next up, we have the Zelman P10 MATX case available in white for only $54.98, making it $25.01. And then lastly, we have this Philips Evnia 42 inch 4K, 138 Hertz. That's a weird one. OLED gaming monitor for only $699.99, making it $304.43 off. And hey, with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm gonna hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well, Reese, we got a good deal when it comes to the Framework laptop because with the Framework 16 that they launched last year, one of the big things with it was that it was gonna have an expansion bay where their initial offering was a GPU that you could slot into the back of the Framework 16. And now they have their first additional official expansion bay that you can put into the Framework laptop, which is a new dual M.2 module. This will allow you to get up to 16 terabytes of additional storage on your Framework laptop just by using the PCI Express lanes that are attached that would be for the GPU. You have to get rid of the GPU in order to use this or you bought a Framework 16 that didn't actually have the expansion GPU dock and you just want the extra storage. This, with all of the additional upgrades that you can make to the Framework 16, could give you up to 32 terabytes of total storage in a singular laptop in case that's how you wanna swing it. In case you're thinking of swinging on over to an RTX 50 series GPU, we're getting some details coming out from one of the third-party companies about the features that NVIDIA is gonna potentially announce when it comes to CES, specifically with all of the AI, DLSS, all that kind of stuff. Allegedly, we're getting advanced DLSS technology. This could potentially DLSS for enhanced ray tracing for improved RT cores with more realistic lighting shadows and reflections. AI accelerated graphics with this is a new one, neural rendering capabilities, which is not something that we kind of know the details of, but this little tagline saying, revolutionizing how graphics are processed and displayed. Now, is this gonna be different than deep, deep learning, super sampling, neural rendering kind of has the same tone to it. It's the same general uh, AI, marketing speak nonsense. So maybe Jensen will get on stage at CES and kind of really hammer home the difference from this. And potentially this could be something that was like an RTX back in the day where there's gonna be a few games that adopt neural rendering at the very beginning and then it becomes a pipeline for other game developers to put it into their video game, kind of like DLSS and uh, RTX ray tracing back in the 2018, 2019 era. Or this is just marketing press release garbage and it's not gonna be anything new. Uh, there's also some theories that it, this could be potentially neural texture compression, which allows you to squeeze more information into a smaller memory footprint, which could potentially make it so that the eight gigabytes of memory that's on an NVIDIA GPU isn't actually that big of a deal because it's all being processed with the neural uh, pipeline that makes it so that you're getting more effective throughput out of the eight gigabytes than you would with a higher gigabyte graphics card. But it's not just potentially having neural rendering that could fix the VRAM amount limits. The RTX 5080 is allegedly getting a speed
speed boost to help offset the fact that it's only going to have allegedly 16 gigabytes of VRAM. According to reports, the 5080 is supposed to have the fastest VRAM out of the 50 series on the market, coming in at 30 gigabits per second, with every other card in the lineup, including the 5090, only getting 28 gigabits per second, which means that the 5080 would have roughly one terabyte of effective memory bandwidth, 960 gigabytes per second, which is within 5% of the RTX 4090. The 5090 is gonna have a higher memory total bandwidth because it's gonna be on a 384-bit bus, whereas the 5080 is only gonna be on a 256-bit bus, which is the exact same as the current 4080. So this is about a 30 to 35% increase for the memory speed throughput on the 5080 versus the 4080. So even if you're not getting a memory improvement, you are running that memory considerably faster on the 5080. And then potentially if the neural rendering capabilities allow for compression and decompression using AI to make effective use of that 16 gigabytes, this might be a card potentially that is more effective than its numbers on paper indicate, or this is all just marketing nonsense and uh, people will still be upset, especially when AMD is likely to release a GPU at a lower price point that has 24 gigabytes of VRAM. We obviously have to wait and see how it all plays out, but we're getting within weeks of the RTX 50 series announcement. We're getting within weeks of the RX 8000 series announcement. All of that should be happening at CES. UFD Tech will be going to CES. We're not gonna be there for the whole thing, but we are there for a little bit of stuff. So let me know what you wanna see from our CES content as we're doing that, and I'll respond to that in the comments. Yesterday's comments, you had a lot to say about the 50 series. Devin saying, why would I buy a 5060 that only has eight gigabytes knowing that I could buy a B580 for $250? NVIDIA GPUs aren't cheap either. I think this might be the time we see a change in the market. Um, why, why would you, I don't know. I don't know why you would buy it, but I know why other people would buy it. It's because they don't trust Intel's drivers. They don't trust Intel's performance in various different games. They don't trust Intel because it's not an established GPU brand at this point. So that's one reason. Another reason is that, uh, despite the fact that things are, uh, good for Intel, AMD has also offered good price to performance and better VRAM in a lot of different sectors. And that has not moved the market. So. I, thinking that it's going to be different this time just because it's Intel, I'm not. I'm not sure that's gonna that's gonna happen. Uh, but that you know, I, I'm just trying to be real. I don't think the B580 changes as much as people in the comments want everybody to think. But then Abdullah Abraham saying Reese should come live near Cape Town. We didn't have load shedding in almost a year. Well, Reese doesn't really have load shedding back where he lives. He just decided to go back to his parents' house for the holidays and there's always something that happens like this. It's always a nightmare whenever Reese decides to go home. Listen, it's just, I, he's gonna go back to his house eventually and he'll have he'll have uh, internet and electricity again and it'll be fine. And the Bob Tech Services, Brett, you're killing me with the pop-ups for video shorts, getting six to seven pop-ups a day. And then Beanie King saying, pop-ups, I don't understand. I also don't, are you talking about notifications? In which case you can turn those off if, if they are annoying you, but the, the shorts algorithm works completely differently than the regular long form algorithm. So there's no incentive for us to reduce our outputs. The reason you're getting served those videos is because you watch them. And if you don't wanna watch them, stop watching them and then they will get stopped recommended to you. So like uh, when it comes to shorts, like the whole thing with the algorithm there is that uh, just because I stop uploading doesn't mean you're gonna stop getting served all of those videos if that's what you mean by pop-ups. We're coming up in the feed. We're covering the news. There's news to cover. It's gonna happen. We're just gonna, we're gonna be there. Sorry. And then Moon Bunny Lover is saying, I own an A770. There are dozens of us and there are millions of consumers who buy NVIDIA and don't know there is anything else. I think that's really dismissive. I think the, uh, the better than thou attitude that a lot of people who don't buy Nvidia have is, you know, just reductive of people in general. And I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of that, um, but I, you know, good on you for having an A770. Nice. And then Nicholas saying, Brent not wanting to bust a knot lifting. I can relate. Yeah, I don't wanna rip myself open. It's not pleasant. Anyways, we do have the PC I can't pick up, 4080 Super, 9950X. Love to have you uh, over on our Twitch streams in case you wanna enter in to win this PC, twitch.tv forward slash UFD tech. I took the fan filter off of the computer. Get back on there with your magnets. I fixed it. And I'll see you back here for more of the hottest tech news tomorrow.